Use a Mac, have lots of zip files, and wish the icon was more distinctive to speed up your workflow, I've got you covered. In this video, I'll show you how to change those uninspiring and nondescript white icons to something much more vibrant. Now, one of the first things I like to customize when I install a new Mac is the default icon used for zip files. There's nothing offensive about the default icon, but it's really bland. And it's so similar to other icons that when I'm quickly scanning a file list, those zip files just don't jump out at me. Let's have a look. So here's a folder. There's two zip files in it and six text files. But the icons are so small and so similar. So it takes me time to spot them. I know I can sort them and I can search for them, but I just like to see them and instantly know that they're zip files. And I do like to use the file list view as well. Now, an easy way to do this is to just install a dedicated zip or compression tool and then make that the default handler for zip files. And one effect of doing that is often that that application will replace the bland default icon with one of its own. However, you don't need to do that to be able to use the icon of your choice for archive files on your Mac. And you can use any icon you choose for this. So the process only takes a few minutes. It saves me a ton of time down the line when I'm scanning folders looking for zip files. And I hope it'll save you time too. Now, my icon of choice is actually the Apple icon for the utility that handles the zipping and unzipping process on a Mac. But you won't find that utility in your apps folder or even in the utility folder. It's buried in a place that I'm sure Apple don't want you to venture. So make sure that you've backed up, preferably several times, before you venture in there and change things. Once you've backed up, navigate to the folder containing the archive app. So let's do that. And the place to start is your Macintosh HD. And from there into system, and then into library, and within library, down to core services. And within core services, there is the archive utility with the icon that I'm going to be using for all of my zip files. And that green icon really does stand out. Now, once you've found the archive utility, right click and choose show package contents. And that will drill you down inside the application. Then double click to get into the contents and double click on resources to get into there. And we then have this icon, bah.icons. And that's the one I'm going to be using. These other files, all of these, are the bland icons. So what I need to do is to replace those with 18 copies of this one. So I'm going to start doing that now, but I'm going to back up once more before I actually do it. So back on my desktop, I'm going to create a new folder and call that old icons. I'm going to take a copy of those 18 icon files. So holding down the option key and dragging across to there, I now have those safely backed up in that folder. But I now need to create the new icon files. So another new folder and new icons. And this time in there, I don't want a copy of these icons. I want to take a copy of this one that is the correct one. So again, holding the option key down and dragging and dropping that into that folder. Open up that folder. And now I need 18 copies of that. So I'm just going to copy and just keep pasting until I've got 18 of those. And I'm not worried in the slightest about the name that they're using. It's just copy two, copy three, etc. That really doesn't matter because they're going to have to be renamed so they match these originals inside the application package. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that. One is to use an application, and that's what I'll be doing. I'll be using a utility called Name Mangler to do that. But you could just as easily use a different application, something like Better Find a Rename, or you could even do this manually. But as I say, I'm going to use Name Mangler. So I'm just going to open the application and then drag and drop these file names, those 18 file names, into Name Mangler. And I have a text file that contains the names of those 18 files. And that's what I'll be using as the source for Name Mangler to rename. So just closing down that text file. And in here, I am looking to name by sequence, but I don't want a particular format. I want a list of arbitrary terms. And then I need to go and find the file that I need, which is on the desktop. 
and it's the one there, zip icons, file names, and import that. And it imports the text. There's the list over on the right hand side. And you can see that the before name is on the left and the after name is on the right. And that's what it's going to rename them. So for me, that is by far the quickest way. Really recommend Name Mangler for renaming files. It's great. So very quickly, I'm done. I now have in my old icons, so these were the bland ones, I have 18 there with those names. And over here, 18 files correctly named. So let's leave the new icons to one side because the next step is to take these 18 icons and drag and drop them into there. And it asks me to authenticate. So you're going to need an admin account. And because those files already exist in that location, you're going to need to confirm that you do want to replace them. So apply to all and replace. And this is where it wants my password and OK that. And what that has done is actually take those icons out of my new icons folder and replace the existing icons inside the application. But in case I ever need to do this again, I'm going to take a copy of those back. So holding the option key down and putting them back in that folder as well. So I have a copy of them for future reference. And that's it. So I can close down that application window there that was looking inside the package. And opening up my files folder, you can see nothing has changed. That's because I need to log out and log back in again for that to take effect. So bear with me while I do that. So while I'm logging out and logging back in again, a couple of caveats. You may have to repeat this process after running a system update. So it's quite conceivable that Apple will make changes to that application and that will overwrite the changes you have made. All you need to do is go in and do exactly the same thing again. And the other thing to consider is if you want to use this new icon on other machines, then you're going to need to repeat this process on those machines. But now we're back in, so let's have a look at it in action. And here's the same folder full of files that we had last time. And this time when I open those up, the two zip files are instantly recognizable because they're using that green icon. So let's have a quick recap. What do you need to do to make that work? You need to locate the archive utility. And the path for that is system, library, core services, archive utility dot app. You need to right click and show the package contents and then replace the existing file type icons with a set of new icons and then simply log out and log back in and you have new icons. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com slash VIP. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.